Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about vertical translations of functions. Sorry, that should, that should read translations of functions. There we go. So, um, last year you would have talked about translations of um, parabolas. So let's start with parabolas. Let's say I've got this parabola right here. This is a very basic parabola, f of x is equal to x squared. We actually call this the parent parabola. And we call it the parent parabola because all other parabolas can be gotten by making changes to this parabola. So if we're talking about vertical translations of this parabola, we might end up with something like, for example, this, right? g of x is equal to x squared plus 3. Now, notice that these two parabolas look exactly alike. The only difference is that g of x is basically up a little bit, right? It's been moved up by, in this case, three units. And you're also going to notice that in the equation, right, it's going to look exactly the same. Instead of f of x is equal to x squared, we're going to have g of x is equal to x squared plus 3. And that plus 3, of course, implies that we've moved up the parabola three units, okay? We've increased all the y values of all our points by 3, which moves the parabola up three units, okay? So you're familiar with parabolas. Let's talk about something that you haven't seen a lot of before. So this is the parent square root function. f of x is equal to the square root of x. So Hopefully you got a sense of what that looks like by doing that uh, parent functions sheet that I assigned for you guys. Uh, you should get a function that looks like this, by the way. All right, so let's vertically translate this function a little bit. All right, so if we ver vertically translate it in the same way as we did with the, uh, the parabola up above, we're going to get something that looks like this, maybe. So that's a square root function that's been moved up three units. And notice that the equation looks very similar. As opposed to f of x is equal to the square root of x, we get g of x is equal to the square root of x plus 3 at the end, okay? So again, that plus 3 basically means that we've added 3 to all our y values, which moves all our points up three units, okay? So notice that in both cases, when we add a 3 onto the end, that moves the entire shape up 3 units. Of course, if we subtracted at the end, that would move the entire shape down by a certain number of units. Okay, And that means we could actually come up with a rule for vertical translations. So <clears throat> in general, if we have a parent function given by f of x, and we've learned about um, several different parent functions by now, right? We talked about parabolas and square root functions, but we also talked about the absolute value function and the reciprocal function. Those are all from that parent function sheet. So if f of x is a parent function, then if you have something like g of x, right? A function g of x, which is the same thing as f of x, except for you've added some number or maybe subtracted some number at the end, some number c, then what you've actually done is you've vertically translated your parent function up or down by c units, okay? So again, in general, if you add or subtract some constant number to the end of a parent function f of x, then you'll get a new function g of x, which is a vertical translation up or down by c units, okay? So that's vertical translations. Let's talk a little bit about horizontal translations now. Okay, so horizontal translations of functions. So again, we're going to start back with parabolas. So once again, we have our parent parabola here, f of x is equal to x squared. If we want to horizontally translate that, remember that means moving it left or right, we might end up getting something like this. So this is supposed to be the same parabola, but it's been shifted to the right three units. And the equation of that, as you might recall, would be g of x is equal to x minus 3 all squared. So notice that instead of just being x squared, we've basically replaced the x with x minus 3. So we've replaced x with x minus 3, which is why x minus 3 is being squared. Okay, And that tells us that we've shifted to the right three units. Also keep in mind that when you move to the right in this case, you do get the minus 3 in this case. All right. If you were to move to the left, you would have plus 3. We can talk a little bit about why that is the case in class. All right, but let's talk about another kind of function. Again, we'll, do, we'll go with the square root function again. So this is our parent square root function again. f of x is equal to the square root of x. Okay, let's horizontally translate this and see what it looks like. So this is a horizontal translation to the right by three units of our parent function. Okay, and the function is g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 3. So we're taking the square root of all of x minus 3. Okay, notice that once again, we basically, to get this equation, replaced x with x minus 3. 
Okay, so we actually replaced x with x minus 3. Okay, and again, that indicates that we've moved 3 units to the right. Okay, and again, if it was x plus 3 underneath the square root, we would have moved maybe 3 units to the left. All right, let's come up with a general rule, okay, for horizontal translation. So in general, once again, if f of x is a parent function, then we can get some sort of transformed function, which we're going to call g of x, Okay, and to get g of x, if we want to horizontally translate it, we're going to take our parent function f, okay, but instead of taking f of x, right, since we're replacing x with, you know, in the cases above, x minus 3, for example, right, um, we're going to have f of x minus d. So again, that x minus d means that you replace x in the parent function with x minus d. And usually you'll see an actual value for d, so up above again we had x minus 3, but you could also have x plus 2 or whatever. So to get the, for, uh, the function g of x, you take your parent function f and you replace x with x minus d, and that is going to be a horizontal translation left or right, by d units, okay? So d units. So that is the general rule for horizontal translations for all functions, okay? If you have some parent function f of x, then if you replace x with x minus d, you get a horizontal translation left or right by d units, okay? So hopefully this helps you guys to understand vertical and horizontal translations of functions a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more on Monday about them. Take care.